Welcome back to another episode of the 1% Life Podcast. I'm your host, Coach JT. This information is for educational and informational purposes only and is solely a self-help tool for your own use. I'm not providing medical, psychological, fitness, or nutrition therapy. You should not use this information to diagnose or treat any health problem or illness without consulting your own medical practitioner. As always, results of any kind will vary based on each person's unique circumstances, capacity, and work ethic. Seems like every day I talk to at least one person about their sick, obese, medicated friends and family members. People close to them with failing health. Could be a spouse. A lot of times in my demographic, it's parents they're taking care of. But it could be a sister, aunt, best friend, kids. All of us have someone or maybe multiple people in our circle that we care about. We wish would take better care of themselves. Or maybe it's you. Maybe you're the person that your family's worried about. Maybe you're the one dealing with obesity and type 2 diabetes and inflammatory issues. Maybe you're the one going to the doctor all the time. Losing your mobility. Medications piling up. You've got high blood pressure, depression, fatigue, fatty liver. Either way, you're just watching this person decline. They continue to do the same thing over and over that got them there in the first place. Same destructive behaviors like watching a train wreck from the sidelines. I could list you 30 or 40 people that are doing this right now. So how do you get somebody like this to change? Really change, long term. Not just a week of threatening them. Especially if you feel like you've tried everything. Maybe you live with this person. Maybe you spent two days in the hospital with them last week. They made a bunch of promises, got out, and continued to do the same thing again. You've begged them. You've threatened them. You've bribed them. You've been restrictive. In my experience, there's only one thing that really works long term. And what you can't do is you can't push somebody up a ladder. You're not going to force somebody to do something they're not ready to do. It never works. I used to try to do that with clients. It was so frustrating. I'd put so much effort into both people. One person would change, the other wouldn't. The reality is if you're not ready to change and you don't want to meet me halfway, there's nothing I can do to help you. I took on a client a couple years ago that would be considered normal by today's standards, unfortunately. Need to lose some weight, come off a couple meds, low energy, etc. She started great, did exactly what she was supposed to do. First 30 days were fantastic. She dropped weight. She came off the meds. Her energy level improved. Everything you'd expect. Then rapid downhill right back to the beginning. What was her excuse? My husband doesn't support me. It's too hard with them doing that in front of me. He's still eating garbage. He's not working out. He drinks my favorite wine at night. So that lasted for a little while. She got super frustrated with him, and then she came back. And she started back up. And then the same thing happened. First 30 days were great. After that, she crashed, went right back to the beginning. And that cycle continues four or five times. Until she finally decided she didn't care if he was on board or not. She was doing it for herself. It wasn't for him. She made a decision and she never looked back. And then what do you think happened? Besides the fact that she's a completely different person. Fixed everything she wanted to fix. Healthier, happier, stronger, leaner non-medicated, everything you'd want. What else do you think happened? He followed her and changed too. Had she handled it right and stayed the course in the beginning, it probably would have happened sooner. But there's a dark side to this too. It doesn't always happen that way. I've also seen people start, make dramatic positive changes, and then tear them apart because of how they both handled it. Now, it's not because the person changed, It's how they handle the process. I've worked with thousands of couples going through this over the years, and it's rare that both people actually start at the same time, and that's where the problem starts. So what happens if you start and they don't? If you don't handle it the right way, it is going to cause problems 100% of the time. And then you're going to end up quitting because that's the easiest out. If you start, it causes problems, then you just stop and the problems go away. It's the easiest thing to do. But here's the two scenarios that you're going to face. If you start, you make a decision to start, and you keep moving, and you make the changes, one of two things is going to happen. Number one, you're going to lose weight. You're going to feel sexier. You're going to have more energy. You're going to buy new clothes. You're going to be happier and healthier overall. And you're going to start to resent them for not taking care of themselves like you are. For all the reasons that you're doing it, you expect them to do it too. For us, for them, we're getting older. We've got kids Do it for us and our relationship and our intimacy, all the the reasons. 
Or number two, you're going to get all those same results. You're going to lose weight, feel sexier, have more energy, buy new clothes, happier, healthier. And you're going to make them feel like a loser for not doing it. You're going to throw it in their face and you're going to make them feel even worse about themselves than they already do. So number one, you're going to resent them. Number two, they're going to resent you. Or the most likely scenario is going to be both. A lot of you guys know that I have two boys in their early 20s. Both are super healthy. They exercise five to six days a week. They eat super clean. They don't drink. They've never done drugs. They monitor their sleep. They have balance. They're happy. They're healthy. They're successful. And I never forced them to exercise. I showed them. They saw me do it with thousands of clients. I never forced them to eat like me. I provided the right choices. I was the example. That's the most powerful way to get someone to change is to focus on yourself. You have to remember that no one else cares. They're not losing sleep about your goals. No one, not even your spouse. It's just the truth. It's not keeping anyone else up at night if you don't lose body fat, if you don't come off the medication. But what you've got to do is you've got to prove to them that it's not another fad. How many times have you started and stopped something? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Promises made. Programs bought. Supplements bought over and over and over again. They just wait on you to quit because you always do. Dozens of times probably. Most people. So you start and you don't stop. You open the door and you gently offer. I'm going to go to the gym if you want to go with me. I'm prepping food. Do you want me to make extra for you? I'm going to go for a walk this afternoon if you want to go with me. Hey, I'm going to go get some new shoes because I'm walking a lot and I need some new ones. You probably do too if you want to go with me. Be extra loving. Be extra kind. They're going to feel distance anyway. The second that you start creating a gap between your health and theirs, they're going to see it. They're going to feel it. Don't make it worse. Overall, long term, if your spouse doesn't support you long term, that's a different issue. There's something wrong with that. Maybe you need to look deeper into that issue. What you can't do is you can't brag about yourself constantly. They see it. They see every move you make, every change that's happening. They're watching you like a hawk. Trust me, they see it all. And I know you're proud of the progress that you're making and you want to share that with them, but that's not how they see it. It's bragging to them. It's rubbing it into them because they feel so bad about where they're at. And then don't allow yourself to get resentful. If you're only 30 to 60 days in, you were just there. Right? And don't ask them to join all the time. Just leave the door open. I'm going to the gym. You should go with me. I'm going to eat good. You should eat good with me. You shouldn't eat that. You can't do that. Don't act like you're better than them just because you started 60 days ago or 90 days ago or a year ago. Don't try to be their coach. Don't expect them to care like you do. It's not, it's not their job yet. They're not ready. What you have to do is you have to show them, not tell them. That's the whole trick. I believe the single biggest reason for my high success rate over the years is because I lead by example. I try to be the pinnacle of what I preach to others in every area of my life. People should want to be like you act, not like what you say. If you aren't where somebody wants to be, why would they follow you? Imagine this. You and I are on a hike through the forest and we come to this massive ravine with this rickety old bridge crossing it. And I tell you to go first. Trust me, go ahead. What would be your first gut instinct? If it's so safe, show me. Get your butt on there first. What if I tried to push you across it? What if I tried talking you into it? Being persuasive, threatening you, putting my hand on you and physically trying to push you. Every single thing I did would make you less likely to cross the bridge. At some point, there's no way I'm going to get you to do it. Now, same scenario. We come to that bridge and I don't say a word to you. I don't even look at you. I just start across. I just walk out on it. You may pause for a second and let me get a few steps, but you're going to follow me. You're not going to say a word. I don't have to say a word to you. I don't have to ask you to do it. I don't have to coerce you to do it. I don't have to talk you into it. You see me doing it. That's all the proof you need. Now you can follow. You always have to remember 
that you were just where they're at just a little bit ago. Then start, stay close to them, show them the way, and don't tell them. Keep the door open, but don't push them through it. Gently encourage them by actions. Hey, I'm headed to the gym in an hour if you want to go. Let me know. I'll fill up your water bottle for you. I'm prepping some food for the week. Let me know if you want me to make some extra. I'm getting some new shoes to go walk in the hood. If you're interested in starting to walk with me, you probably need some too. Don't ever be degrading. Don't be demeaning. Don't be spiteful. Don't be hateful. Just because you've started doesn't mean they're ready yet. Stop with the snide comments. Why are you eating those chips? They're going to make your blood sugar worse. Sure is a big bowl of ice cream. You don't think your gut's big enough already? Your back hurts because you're lazy and you sit around too much. Right? All of a sudden you become the expert, the coach. It's going to drive a wedge between you guys, I promise. The most important thing you can do, though, is to go. Don't stop. Keep your commitment to yourself. No more fads. Remember, they're watching you. They're waiting on you to stop again. When you don't stop, 90% of the time, they are going to follow suit. Always come from a place of respect and understanding. Leave the unhealthy garbage behind, not just if they decide to do it with you, but for yourself. Remember, you're not their coach. You're not the freaking food police. And then practice self-discipline. Don't expect others to do what you don't do and lead by example. I'm out. For more content, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. See you.